Hello, Darth Vegan here, back with another episode of Special Feature Friday. Today, we're going to be looking at Fourth Generation Warfare by Eversim. The developers were kind enough to provide this copy to me for free so that I could do this review. And so, I am looking forward to showing it on my channel. What is Fourth Generation Warfare? Well, Fourth Generation Warfare is a geopolitical simulator that simulates a warfare in the 21st century, which in addition to the direct opposition of military forces, now includes espionage, international politics, cyber warfare, media manipulation, and trade wars. As the leader of a nation, dispatch and control your team of characters all around the world to destabilize your enemies and establish your supremacy. All methods are fair game, hacking, sabotage, political interference, military strikes, corruption, treachery, assassinations, energy domination, data theft. 4GW turn-based game combines a strategy game with a role-playing game, and that is directly off of their Steam page. So, I, I have tried uh, to play the game several times now, and that made it sound negative. It, um, it's very difficult to to grasp. There's so much that there's a lot to this game. So let's just dive right in and see if we can make sense of it. All right. So there, right at the beginning, you have a couple of options right now. One is the presidential career, where you just start with just the leader of the nation that you choose, or you can choose full government, in which you choose to start with all of the governmental characters uh, of a nation of your choice and then there's these little harder options as well but uh, but they're basically the same um, they're basically the same as one of these options so I'm I've tried both and full government to me is a little bit overwhelming so I, I feel like presidential career is better if you're starting out for the first time and uh, you basically can recruit new characters as you go along and it kind of allows you to build up your understanding of the game I think. I do have the difficulty level on beginner it is a turn based game and you can do 50, 100, 500 or unlimited turns so while it is a turn based game there's there's not like a, a limit if you don't want there to be you just play unlimited. You can put a time limit on your turns themselves uh, the number of actions per turn that determines if you have multiple characters, you can do multiple actions per turn. I have to set that up to 15 in case I have a lot of characters I can do with multiple actions. Uh, additional characters, you can set that up so you can get additional characters. I think it's fine as it is. Secret objective gives you some little bonus things that you can get points for. And then, uh, of course, number of adversaries is, that makes perfect sense. It is what it is. Okay, so first we're going to choose our country. I've tried a couple of our already. I played as North Korea, I played as Cuba, and I played as the United States. And while the United States is kind of easy because it's got a pretty good, you know, setup already, I just can't stand to look at this picture all day. So no. Uh, let's do uh, let's do another stable country. Let's do Germany and uh, maybe uh, Kermel here. They, they took real life leaders and and uh, mimicked them a little bit. So United States is R. Trump. Germany is G. Kermel. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. But here's some little basic stats of the uh, of the nation that I'm choosing. And uh, you can see that there's a 5.6% unemployment rate, which is pretty high, actually. So that's, that's not that good. The deficit uh, surplus of the GDP um, is pretty close to zero. So that's not terrible. Let's see, for example, United States 2.4, United Kingdom 1.9, so you can see it's kind of the, the Spain's 16.3 unemployment rate, holy cow. So you can kind of see that, you know, uh, that the difference in countries have, all, all these main countries have pretty close to zero. Well, pretty close. All right, so we're going to choose Germany, and our rival will be China. Uh, now let's make our rival France. <laughs> We're gonna recreate the uh, the World War II era. All right, are we ready? Let's start the game. All right, so here we are. Keep in mind this is a geopolitical simulator, so the graphics are gonna be what they are. But that being said, the maps are really well done. Uh, you can they kind of looks like they use like a Google Earth 
satellite image or something because you can come in here and you can zoom out and see the entire world or you can look at individual cities and you can see that it's it's pretty impressive actually and and as your characters move around they will take these roads to and from places uh, they actually travel down the road so that it's pretty cool actually and I, I'm pretty impressed with it so um, so this is the this is the gameplay screen and keep in mind this is early access as of March 29th 2020 so anything you see here could change and could most well, certainly get better I'm sure um, but uh, there is a lot to this game it is incredibly complex and I have a feeling that some of the complexity is a little bit shallow and what do I mean by that I mean you can do a lot of stuff but a lot of it seems like it doesn't have an impact really but I, I, maybe that's just because I don't fully understand it that is 100 percent entirely possible because like I said it's an incredibly complex game and there's not much of a tutorial out there right now so um, you, just kinda, you kinda stumble around at first so let's get started when you first start you get a little news article that uh, says that you're the new head of state and you get these news articles as turns progress and things happen whether it's decisions that you make or decisions that uh, other countries make but uh, you get little news articles about uh, unemployment and yada yada a bunch of different things you also get to have the cell phone here and you get uh, messages again based on things that you uh, Chancellor, as the chief of that you state, do you inspire hope among our countrymen the time is now to take action and demonstrate your capabilities the exercise of power is perilous it is essential that you place loyal and competent aides in key positions I would suggest that you appoint the four principal members of your cabinet without delay. Those who can carry out their tasks in their respective domains while following your leadership. Thank you. So you have these little advisors that, that pop up and give you some pieces of advice as you go along. But as you recruit new characters, the advisors tend to be those characters. So you see here in Berlin, we have a couple of character icons here. One is our character, G. Kermel, and then one is our husband, T. Kermel. I guess he's our husband, yeah. You can right-click, oops, you can right-click on him, and it gives him your stats. Yeah, husband of Gisela Kermel. Um, so he's got a 30% level of protection. He's married to us. He lives in Berlin. Um, he's got 30 influence points, and influence points are used by these main characters to gain influence over these uh, teal characters, which are kind of like sub-characters. And they have a limited amount of options that they can do, but they can do some things. They can send, they can pick up files, they can place explosives, assassinate people, steal objects. Uh, so they can do some things, but it costs influence for you to make them do those things. Like if I wanted him to assassinate somebody, we'd have to have at least 80 influence over him. And right now we have 30. All right, so how do you build up influence with, with other characters? Well, let's just get, jump in. First thing we'll, we'll address is influence over characters. If you click on your own character or one of the characters that you can control, up here at the top are like your national uh, actions, your professional actions, the, the things you do as part of your job. Below are the general actions that you do as an individual character. And you can use these actions to build up influence with other characters or to, to interact with other characters in other ways. Uh, like I can start a conversation with her husband and it gives us one influence. I can threaten death to him and it takes away, or it gives us 60 influence, but it's, it's a negative influence because it's red. Uh, we can bribe him by financial transaction, give him 40 influence. We can attempt to seduce him, get 10 influence. Invite to a restaurant, 15 influence. So you see how that works. Up here are our professional actions and every character that you choose of a different profession will have different options here so as uh, the president or the chancellor or whatever the leader of your nation that you choose um, we have these options here you can name a member of the cabinet you can establish a national budget you can report an inter international crime to the UN and some of these are grayed out because I don't have the ability to do it at the moment uh, you can request an official meeting with another leader of a nation you can propose a political interview can authorize the use of nuclear weapons. 
You can conduct an award ceremony. You can organize an election rally. So there's lots of things you can do. Again, some of them just seem like they don't really do anything except for maybe like role-playing purposes, at least as far as I can tell. And I'll get into that as I, as I come across those things. But anyway, let's, let's get started. I'm going to name a member of my cabinet. You have four cabinet members. doesn't matter what nation you choose. You always have these same four uh, cabinet members. I'm, first, I'm going to do the foreign affairs one. And you have some options here that you can choose from. And it gives kind of like some stats about them. This guy's inexperienced and a psychopath. He's probably not the best for director of foreign affairs. Uh, this lady is skilled and ambitious. So she's probably pretty good. Uh, inexperienced and cerebral. Uh, inexperienced and paranoid, inexperienced and discreet, inexperienced and charismatic. I'm probably going to go with Cornelia Burnt because she's the only experienced person that I saw. And you can highlight over these traits and it kind of gives you a little bit of an idea about uh, what that means. What does it mean to be am ambitious? So ambitious means you're ready to do anything for their career. They learn very quickly, but they're opportunistic and they're loyalty questionable. So that's not that good. <laughs> but she's she's the only skilled person. I'm going to go ahead and take her. I'm going to hire her. So you can see now I have this little icon down here. And it was yellow, meaning I was, had that action in progress. But now it's green. It means it's complete. And I also have a, uh, a an email now, a voicemail. It says, uh, from Cornelia, it says, Thank you for the trust you have in me. You can count on me. I will do my best to develop our diplomatic relations and make our nation one of the most influential in the world. To work more smoothly, it would be good if our minister sends a team with some diplomatic experience. Thank you. All right, so that's all Angela, or excuse me, Gisela, can do this turn. Um, uh, so, so, so her turn's over. Um in order to do another action for Gisela, I would have to, uh, I would have to uh, progress to the next turn. But I can still do actions with uh, Cornelia and what this guy's name is T. Uh, and then we get a little news article that says she was entered the government. All right, so she's over here, and he's over here. I can't really do anything with him, so I'm going to go ahead and go to her. And what can she do? She can start a recruitment campaign for diplomats, which is something I want. Um, she can do some of these other actions eventually. You can fire her. Uh, request an official meeting. Cut off commercial relations with another nation. Or she can give a lecture. Now, this is one of the things I didn't really find did anything. You can hold a lecture. Other members of the government and journalists and whatever else you have in your nation can attend the event. And then, and then what? I, I don't know. Nothing, apparently, that I could tell. But maybe it uh, does something in the background that... Uh, that gives you some sort of indication but as far as I could tell it didn't really do anything <laughs> so that's kind of what I'm talking about with a lot of things to do but it's not apparently evident what those things actually impact in the game all right so let's take a look at um, our nation itself I'm going to go into the nation's capital here and there are some buildings in here that you can click on that actually have stuff to do like this foreign intelligence service. I'm going to right click on it. And you can see it's, there's some items here that your characters can pick up if they wanted to. There's some uh, false papers, some rockets, some body armor, some explosives if you wanted to plant explosives somewhere. <coughs> some cash, a silenced pistol. Um, but more importantly, <clears throat> More importantly, there's a server that you can go into. And if you have the cabinet member, you can log in as that character. And uh, then you can look at the data in that server. But I don't have a foreign intelligence service cabinet member yet. So I can't do that. But I can probably come into the chancellery. Now there's not a, uh, there's not a uh, thing there. Where is the minister of... Uh, there we go foreign affairs so I can go into the server here you can see it automatically populates uh, Cornelia's ID you can log in you can look at the database and then you can see some information both about our country and some of the other countries around we can look at uh, international trade let's look at France for example how are we doing with France uh, 
trade agreements with France. Um, I think this is just trade agreements France has with everybody else. So this is what he's importing, and then this over here is what he is exporting, right? Is it, is it changing? I don't see it changing. Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> and then over here it's kind of broken up by petroleum, energy, industry, and then food. Oh, it's it's got them broken out there. Okay, I see now. France does not export any oil. It, it only imports oil. Energy, it does imports and exports. Industry, it does imp uh, imports and exports. And then food, imports and exports. Okay. Sorry, my bad. All right, so you can look at international trade. You can look at commercial contracts. These are all the contracts that we have with other countries currently you can see we've got a lot of contracts and then uh here's the sales the purchases and then the budgetary impact on it and i don't know if you can, can you cancel it from here or i don't think so i think you have to go through your your uh, diplomats to do those types of things uh here's the worldwide production you can see who makes what all right so that's pretty interesting and then uh, judicial cooperation agreements. We don't have any. We don't have any weapon contracts, probably. Nope. And we probably don't have any strategic packs. Nope, we don't. Okay. So that's that's just one branch of the government. Every branch has a similar type server server that you can look at, and uh, then you can you can see um, what's going on in that country. And then once you zoom into a uh, a city here, you can you can zoom back out to the the world map view just by clicking that little globe. I'm gonna go ahead and go to her and have her oops I'm gonna have her recruit a diplomat. And then we're gonna you can choose the city you want to recruit them from. I'm gonna recruit them from Berlin. Alright. So you can see <clears throat> this little uh icon here was yellow it turned green that means she got the recruitment done. All right, so the recruitment has begun. The first candidate should be here soon. All right, so she actually just began the recruitment, but they don't have any candidates yet. So that's pretty much all we can do this turn, unless you wanted to look for uh, other pieces of information. Like you can look at the military base. You can see we had some jets, helicopters, and drones there. And you can send them and attack. You can use those to attack people and, uh, and that type of thing. Now, I'm, I'm not sure what... Germany may be, uh, oh, you have to have a director of armed forces required before you can do any military action, but that's okay. We're not going to do any military action yet. Not yet. Not yet. France, hang on tight. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and end the turn. Other players are going to do their turns. And you can see as we begin our turn here, the next turn two out of 50, uh, there's some, some people are moving around, there's jets flying around, and who knows what's going on there. Um, we got three emails, so let's take a look here. Uh, the first one is a proposal. Chancellor, as former head of Secret Services for your predecessor, I'm here to offer my services in my former position. You can count on my experience, my knowledge, and current cases, and my associates, especially experienced former agents who can rejoin our team. So he's the former head of the Secret Services. We could just accept him, and he will become our Minister of uh, Intelligence without having to recruit him, so I think I'll do that. All right. And then we got uh, some messages from uh, Cornelia here. She's got two candidates. She's got this guy, Mills Franz. He's cerebral and inexperienced. Or we got Lips Hans. Hans and Franz, of course. They're going to pump you up. Anyway, that's said not live. Um, let's see here. He's skilled and resourceful. I'm going to take this guy. All right, so now we've got Hans Lips. Yes, thank you for the trust in me. Yada, 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 yes. Mm-hmm. So T. Lauer also has now joined us as our Minister of uh, Intelligence, Director of Intelligence. And we got a news article about him joining as the head of intelligence. And that kind of saved me in action here. To I don't have to actually uh, use her turn to recruit someone now. I can instead recruit, uh, recruit Director of Homeland Security with her. 
Let's see what she's got here. I kind of want this paranoid lady here to be some of my security. So she's going to do that recruitment. There we go. And thank you. You're welcome. And you can see as we get, as we do recruitments, we get points because one of our bonus objectives was to uh, recruit heads of the government <coughs> and appoint the entire cabinet. So once we do so, we'll get 5,000 extra points. All right. So now, already, we're second turn in, and we've got tons of characters to do stuff with, so that's awesome. So I'm going to take Han's lips here. He is a diplomat. I'm going to look for a diplomatic contact in, uh, let's see, let's do Denmark. Let's see if we can get some diplomatic contacts in Denmark. So you can see it's yellow, and then it turns green. Some turns will take more than one turn for it to, uh, for it to happen. All right, so now we got Thomas Van Mad Serblum. He's good to hear from you. Yes, thank you. So now he's down here in our row, but he's not actually one of our characters. We can't actually do anything with him. You can see he's got the little Denmark flag down here. But it, this is a character that we know that we've interacted with. So in the future, whenever the diplomat wants to talk to, to Han here, uh, to our T-Van Mad, T-Von Mad, uh, we can just click on him that shows him where he's at, and then we can, we can come here and interact with him in Copenhagen. Which we will do next turn. We can't we can't do it this turn because we've already taken an action this turn. Also, interestingly, uh, H lips here, Hans. He this is his contact. All right. So these other characters, um, they they can't interact with um, with him. Like E E Seabird here, she can't interact with T Von Mod Serblum. Only H lips can. So that's some, something kind of interesting. The only way you can do that is by transferring a contact. So, you know, if you, if you right click on them, I uh, can't now because he's already taking his turn. But if you click on them and um, you can see, let's look at somebody else. You can see one of the options is to transfer a contact. So he can transfer that contact to somebody else if he decides that uh, he wants to uh, let somebody else interact with that person. All right. So that's pretty cool. All right, so we got E. Seabird here. She is the Director of Homeland Security. So what can she do? She can start recruiting for agents, all right? Uh, you can cancel construction, dismantle infrastructure, building repair, put video surveillance systems in place, and you see that little yellow clock with a two on it. That means it takes two turns. Uh, issue an arrest warrant, uh, construct infrastructure, request financial investigation, dismiss, give a lecture. So some of the uh, similar actions that we've seen uh, elsewhere as well. Now let's go ahead and have her do some video surveillance in place. It's already in place in Berlin, apparently. Let's do another city as well. Let's do Hamburg. All right, so now you can see she's got the yellow thing there. And uh, this little thing to remind you of the actions you have ongoing. We got Elsa Siebert news okay all right so these three characters have taken an action let's go on here to see burnt uh she's my diplomatic person let's um request an official meeting with france i'm gonna have a little talk with france about our border and when are we gonna do it today is the first uh, the 2nd of January. So we're going to go ahead and push it out to uh, Saturday with Bruno Heiler of France. There we go. Very good. So she's got this uh, icon getting ready for the diplomatic meeting, but it won't actually happen until uh, uh, the 4th. So she's kind of just stuck until the 4th. So be careful when you're scheduling events out that you don't uh, go out too far in the future. All right, let's take a look at our uh, our spy here. I mean, our intelligence guy. He can hire spies, cyber analysts, research the identity of an unknown person, create a fake ID badge, such and so forth. Let's do a cyber analyst first. We'll recruit one here in Berlin. And the only reason why, I mean, you can start with all these characters by doing a full full campaign. I find it's... A little less overwhelming to do them one by one like this then you can kind of understand what the heck is going on let's skip our turn or end our turn let's go to the next turn 
All right, we got some emails here. Got a new profile for the cyber analyst. We only have one choice this time. We'll go ahead and accept him. All right. And meeting from France is uh, accepted. It will be in Paris on the 4th. Okay, that's good. Very good. And then we have a news article about a meeting scheduled between Germany and France on the 4th. Awesome. All right, so... Um, Gisela here, we're going to... I keep right-clicking when I should left-click. Um... Let's name our final cabinet member, and we're going to get a military guy here. Introvert, shrewd, paranoid, authoritative, cerebral. Let's do shrewd. What's shrewd do? Insightful and clever there at ease even in questions of questionable legality. Uh, authoritative. Hmm. Even their allies fear them. Cerebral. Hmm. I'm going to do shrewd. Okay. So now we have our entire cabinet. We should get a bonus of uh, meeting all of our secret requirements here. All right, new commander in chief. Yes, our troops are ready. Yes, they are. All right. Okay. So now, um, now for the German aggression. You can uh, you can look now at the military bases, and you can see we've got these ships and submarines and they can they can go around they can move different places they can attack places um, see I can move them from base to base if I want to um, apparently that base is okay I don't know why it took a second but uh, yeah so you can move them from base to base you can move them into form uh, other countries you can attack places so uh, the, the military part is pretty pretty one-dimensional. You basically just take a group of units and you attack something. Uh, it, there's, as far as I can tell, it's like a random number generator based uh, dice rolls or something. It, there's not a lot of information when, when you attack something. It just either works or it doesn't. <laughs> so it's, there's not a lot of combat stats or anything like that so it's kind of hard to tell what's going on but maybe that'll be improved in the future but anyway let's uh let's go ahead and take a look at a couple more things before we go let's take a look at uh mr clappets here clippets ah, i keep right clicking you right click to go into buildings you left click to go into characters so it's kind of confusing it should be the both for, for the, it should be the same for both in my opinion all right so uh you can contact a foreign commander in chief. You can manage the army size. You can inspect the base. You can that takes ten turns. You can support the troops. It, it can ten, that little set hourglass means you will continue to do that until you cancel that action. Um, you can construct military infrastructure, construct a military camp, declare martial law, order military equipment, uh, give a lecture, bring troops home. So you can do all kinds of stuff. Let's go talk to Denmark. We're going to build up a uh, nice relationship with them. They're going to be our allies. All right. Happy to get in touch with you. I'm available to discuss military contracts. Yes, thank you. Awesome. Okay. So now we have two uh, contacts up here in Copenhagen. And where is my diplomat? We need to follow up with uh, our our buddy up there. All right. Let's propose a strategic pact. And I'm going to do that with this guy. All right. Current status new. Both parties are obligated to not take military action against one another. Or we could do a military alliance. You can see this red hand means probably not going to accept that. We can do a non-aggression pact, though. And they are uh, likely to do that. So we're going to send him to do that. And it looks like he's going to fly up there. Or travel up there. Yeah, he's in a, he's in a seat. He's in the airplane seat. So he's going to fly up there. And that will take a turn, I guess, to fly up there and then have that meeting. So he's currently uh, incapacitated at the moment. He can't do anything else. Let's take a look at our cyber analyst here. Our hacker. 
You can create malware for devices. You can hack a device. You can analyze the integrity of a device. Reinforce protection for a device. Uh, steal an object. Um, so you can either do things on your own servers or you can try to find the server of an enemy. So let's see what we can do over here. Let's uh, let's go over to France. Viva la France. And we are going to create malware for a device in France. Here is a fossil fuel power plant. It's got an orange hand, meaning it might be... It's relatively... Uh, it's a medium difficulty, I should, maybe that's what, what I'm trying to say. Farm. Factory. Hmm. Fossil fuel power plant. Let's do this one close to the border. Fossil fuel power plant. Alright, so he's going to go over there and he's going to try to hack that thing. Oh, he's not going to go over there. I mean, he's going to try to log in. Uh-oh. Great malware for a device. Did he, was he successful or not? Oh, we don't know yet. Okay. Now, what else do we need to do? Let's see. She's already taken her turn. Uh, she can still do something. Let's see what she can do. Uh, dee -dee -dee -dee. She can get another diplomat. Oh, she's waiting for her meeting with... Uh, What's his name? Okay. Um, Mr. Lauer here. Let's get him. He can hire a spy, so we'll do that from Berlin. And the police lady. Let's see what she needs to do. She can hire an agent, so let's hire a police officer. Okay. Because she's the head of uh, security. She needs police officers to do her bidding. Similar to like the diplomats and the other things. All right. Aha! We got our secret score completed. Yes. Awesome. The next one is take military control of Dakar in Senegal. Oh, wow. Interesting. All right. And uh, the level of political alignment and the control of the nation with all the other nations in the world must be at least 45%. We got tons of emails going on. Woo! Look at all these phones flashing. All right, so first we'll look at her. The entire network set up at headquarters. Our detectives will be able to work more efficiently identifying suspects. Okay, so we got the surveillance network set up. That's good. That's done. Next is her. Uh, Madam, I propose that we meet on the 6th at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Berlin. Also, oh, the United States wants to meet with us. Sure, we'll accept that meeting. All right. T. Lauer. Uh, here's our spy. She's shrewd and inexperienced. A former combat instructor. Sure, we'll take that. All right. And then we got uh, police inspector. We got two choices. An inexperienced paranoid person or an inexperienced stoic. We'll take the stoic person. All right. Military. I'm contacting you because our nation is building up our military branch and your weapons industry is particularly well known. Oh, 10 fighter jets from you. We await your proposal. Interesting. And he is from where? Kuwait. Uh-huh. Kuwait wants to buy 10 fighter jets from us. Well, that's interesting. Okay. That is interesting. So I'll have to somehow arrange that. Um, so he's up here doing that. And we've got lots of stuff going on. Lots of stuff going on. What's, how did a hacker do? Uh, don't know yet. Here's our police person. Uh, so he can investigate the contact, research an informant. Uh, he can do several things. Assign to building security, follow. I can't investigate anybody just yet with him. Sometimes you'll have mystery people in your, in your place. And uh, you won't know who they are. But you'll, you'll see that they're there. <laughs> so it'll be uh, in your in your ability to, to try to find out who that person is. No informant found. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. That's interesting. He, you know, I just clicked on the town and that's that was his action. Okay. Let's take a look at the news. We've got some news coming scheduled between the United States and uh, 
Germany. I don't think there's any A other. vast network of video surveillance yeah. has been installed in all of the city's streets. Yeah. The stated goal from the authorities is not only to reduce every sort of criminal activity, but also to facilitate police investigations by being able to quickly identify suspects. Yeah, it's true. Okay, awesome. All right, so we're doing well. Uh, let's see. What are these buttons down here do? Okay, so that's a zoom out view. <clears throat> Center the map on current location. Display team colors. Okay. Uh, what is this? Colorize map. Military map. Diplomatic map. Okay. Interesting. Rivals. Surrender. Unfavorable military occupation. Oh, and there's the options. Okay, cool. All right, let's uh, let's find Senegal. Where is Senegal? It's in uh, Africa, but I don't know where. Ah, here it is. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, dee -dee 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 -dee. Senegal. Uh, maybe I can just. Uh, Swim down here and take it. Eh? What was my objective? Take the car in Senegal. Well, let's just take some take some folks down here and do it. Do I have to declare war or anything? I have no idea. Let's see. Let's see if our satellite first can can check out anything in Senegal. What does the satellite do? I have no idea. Never used them. Just saw them. Thought it looked cool. Oh, look, it, it met lots of people up here. My God. It's, it's getting overwhelming already. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's take a look at Military Man here. Military Man. Uh, do I have to declare war or anything like that? Uh, declare martial law. Buy, sell military equipment. Let's do that to this guy in Kuwait. All right, he wanted uh, he wanted ten fighter jets. So fighters rank three. Yeah, I'll take four hundred millions per unit. Sure, why not? Impact on national contract budget minus five hundred eleven. Increase in budgetary surplus, 0 0.02 GDP. That's not bad. Says he won't accept that. Okay. Let's go down to 350. No. 300. No. 200. Yeah. Okay. 275. No. 250. Eh, he's, he's wavering. 225. I want to have a nice green one. If I was playing for real, I might go for an orange, but I, I want to have a nice green. Okay, well, it's like 200 is, is what he wants, okay. So we're gonna go ahead and sell that. There he goes, woo! He's flying to Kuwait. Probably take a couple turns to get there, huh? Yeah. Okay, so he's going to go sell jets to Kuwait, meanwhile, we're sending some military down. Can I just send these troops? Soldiers? Smooth. Let's just attack them. Huh? Why not, right? Ah! There is a fighter airbase here. Uh, sure. We'll attack them. Why not? They're, they're, they're just driving through France. Why not? Drive through France. Who the heck cares? Don't mind us. We're just going to Senegal. Don't mind us. I'm sure there's a better way to do it. Like, maybe we have to, like... Yes. Maybe you have to, um... 
Whoa. Oh, mama. We did something. We did some hits. Intelligence from flyover. Okay. Oh, that, that was interesting. Okay. Let's do another one. Right. Yeah. Didn't really see exactly what that accomplished or anything, but let's do another one. Oh, wait. What was my other options? Uh, we got move and attack, bombardment, bombard until destroyed. All right, let's do that. I'm going to destroy this air base here. Yes. Even though the message was blank, I know that I'm attacking a foreign country. Here they come. Boom! Strangely, he's still got lots of assets in there. Okay, well, that's, that's fine. Let's go ahead and end the turn. Let's see what the UN will uh, probably have something to say about this. <laughs> oh, the phones are ringing off the hook. Let's see what happens. Germany attacks France. Yes. Uh-oh. Uh right in the middle of our meeting, too. Uh-oh, we have turmoil. France doesn't like us. Got a demonstration in the capital. Uh-oh! Looks like it's time to do some suppression. The procession of demonstrators started calmly. However, according to authorities, incidents have not been entirely absent. The discontent is strong, and the protesters are determined. Oh, are they now? Conflict. Sad day, the first of our soldiers have fallen in battle. Yeah. Okay. UN France denounces Germany. Yep, that's what I figured. All right, lots of, lots of uh, stuff here. Uh, got a new diplomatic contact in Denmark. Okay, good. She's got a meeting on the 6th. I guess we our meeting was successful at the, on the 4th. I, I don't know. I mean, that's exactly. A, we had some meetings with these guys, but what was the outcome? I don't know. We attacked them on the same day. <laughs> no informant found. We know that. Okay, we can cancel that. Request for strategic pact. Uh, we accept your request. Okay, awesome. Very good. France has proposed a resolution against us at the UN. Okay, we'll be under sanctions. That's not surprising. Okay, so the France email Mitron is, uh, we now have a contact with him. Um, let's see. No informant found, yep. Prediction of food shortages, uh-oh. Interesting. Uh, let's, let's go to her. We have a demonstration going on. Let's see if we can suppress the unrest here with the military, with the police. Okay. Kermel here is, uh, let's see. We will try to assassinate who? Oh, oh, we got to move over to Harry here. Oh, I just saw a bomb exploding in our town. What was that? Yeah, we're at war with him. Let's, let's move here. Create a, a hideout in Paris. We're gonna sit, we're gonna bring her back. She's going to return to her residence. Uh, I wonder if she'll travel automatically for the meeting. Let's see if she'll travel automatically with a meeting with the United States back to Berlin. All right. Um, let's prepare a commercial contract with Denmark. Um, we need food, right? Let's see if we can import some food from Denmark. We are already importing some. Uh... Uh, purchase. There's a sh we have a shortage of two twenty six point four four megatons. Um, I 
let's see. Let's go, go down to about 450. Mm, he's, he's happy with 450. How about 420? Yep, he's happy with that. 400. Let's see. Let's see if we can get this here. We're going to purchase some food. from Denmark. I guess we're already purchasing electricity as well. So, okay, yep. Let's see if we can upgrade our trade agreement here. Disturbance at the Alexanderplatz in Berlin. Please take action, yes, okay. Awesome. So where is our, did our troops get destroyed that were tra traveling across France here? That's probably what we saw blow up, actually. No? I don't know where our troops are. I don't know where our troops are. Can I take boats down there? Take some of my ships. Some cruisers. Nope. I can go to this naval base here. Oh, that's a different country. No, that's the same country. Okay. Yeah. Take that base. Take that naval base. Here they go. There goes my boats. They're sailing. Got more cruisers. More cruisers and some U boats. Okay, I'm guessing my ground troops got killed in France, probably. But I, I don't know that. I don't know what this little icon next to their thing means. Missile launchers. Tanks. More tanks. Alright, well, let's go ahead and end the turn and see what happens. Oh, our boats are under attack over here. Uh-oh. We're now at war. <laughs> you think? Let's see. Uh, Kuwait, we can assist. Propose a mutual establishment of embassies. Okay, interesting. The demonstration at Alexander Plotz is still going on. The police remain powerless. We may have to use more drastic measures. Military, I guess. Chancellor. Yes. Optimist. After invading the territory, the Austrian armed forces are giving us 48 hours to leave our territory before they open fire. Austrian? We didn't do anything to Austria. Great. Okay, well. I guess they're attacking our base over here. Oh, Lord, they are. Oh, my God. They hit us hard. All right, let's take some tanks over here. And attack their troops. Attack their troops. their troops and missile launch their tanks <laughs> just things blowing up everywhere all right the Air Force base is heavily just damaged okay helicopters I want you to attack Someone, please. 
guess. Down here. Any, any enemies left? I think we've won. Probably have to repair that base somehow. Um, let's see. He wants to play rough, does he? Well then, I just wanted your little... All I wanted was your... Uh, your your territory down there, but now we have to destroy your nuclear power plant with helicopters. Don't make us do this. <laughs> look, look at all this stuff. Alright, so we got her set up in an apartment in Paris. All right. I probably shouldn't have went to war. A small gift. To propose a new Kuwaiti military contract and move it through with a small gift in the bank account of our contact. Oh, so you could bribe him. Okay. Contract refused. Okay. Yeah, he wants a bribe. Son of a gun. Alright. Uh, this is a proposal from them. Alright. Uh. Okay. Make a counter offer. Oh my god, 621? Sure, why not? We're not doing this for real, so. We'll just. We'll just do it. All right, Germany and France are at war. Surprise, surprise. Austrian ultimatum after the German invasion. What? What are you talking about? Where did I invade Austria? Oh my God! There's a lot of news articles. Okay. Back to meeting between us and the United States. All right. Very good. Is my spot. Can she do something though? Or is she still in the hideout? Let's see if she can do an assassination attempt here. No, nope, not yet. Not till next turn. Okay. So, they have invaded the German populace, have they? Well, in that case, I want to request an official meeting with France. Oh, I can't. Because we're at war, I guess. Um, in the current position with Denmark, then. We want Denmark's help. On the 8th. Alright. And you, I want you to hack a device. Uh, in Paris. Hack. Hmm. These are all orange, but might be able to do. Sovereign France Front Headquarters. Some sort of political office. Television building. Let's do that. Let's hack their television and see if we can set up some propaganda or something. Let's do that. Okay. Very good. Hacking okay. Alright. Very good. So next turn we'll be able to see what we can do, I guess. With him. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and recruit another agent here. Oh, see, now we got a, a mystery person here. Right after I did that. Oh, darn. Got this mystery person. Got a mystery person. Alright. And the spy guy. Research identity of unknown person. Right here. That guy. Who's this guy? Info on the target. Andrew Frouterbrook, Secretary of Foreign Affairs. Oh, okay. Interesting. We did know who he was. I don't know why he's grayed out. All right, so um, I guess let's end the turn. Uh, we, do we have more military stuff that we could do? Uh, we got some boats. Attack them. Subs. Attack them. Subs. 
Attack them. And boats. I like to go full onslaught. Let's attack them. I mean, all we wanted was cynical. You know, is that too much to ask? How do you move troops down to a place without crossing across the waters of somebody else? That, that's a good question. I guess I can't use these guys. Maybe they've already moved. Yeah. Alright, so those guys are out and about doing their thing. We're going to end the turn. Uh oh, see helicopters. See something happening. We're taking this. You can see that blue circle. That means we're taking that place, I think. He's going after our offshore wind thing. Hey, you son of a... Shouldn't be doing... Oh, you dirty dog. He's taking our naval bases. Military losses. Yeah, that's not good. Not good at all. Oh, man. They're killing our boats. Well, we're losing this war. All right, so let's assassinate somebody. Let's assassinate somebody. Oh, she can't. Darn. Can I set you up to... Where's her spy at here? Ah, here she is. I want you first to follow somebody. No, just can't can't follow anybody either. All right. How about kidnap someone? No. Okay. How about initiate a conversation? No. Just kidding. Oh, maybe I have to transfer a contact to her or something. Like from the Chancellor. Okay. Serbian ultimatum. Why do they keep saying that all these other countries that were in their territory? Where am I in your territory? France is like dominating us right now. <laughs> They're attacking our weapons facility here. Oh my god, they took over one of our air bases. I have been lax in my... Oh man, they, they're doing a lot of stuff. I'm just sitting here pilly-paddling around. Those guys. Anyway, hopefully this gives you kind of an, uh, an idea of how the game works. Like I said, there's, uh, there's some room for improvement for sure, but uh, overall it's kind of an interesting game. And it's one of those games where once you get started, it's kind of hard to stop. It's like, oh, one more turn, one more turn. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this short little uh, demonstration. Uh, I'm certainly barely know what I'm doing. Well, I don't know what I'm doing, clearly. But uh, you should check it out if you'd like uh, on Steam. It's currently $24.99 on Steam, which is eh, it's a little steep if you ask me for what you get. But, uh, you know, it they have uh, continued to, to do updates on it. So hopefully it will continue to increase and uh, get better and get more in-depth. Eversim is the creators of Power and Revolution. I meant to mention that before, but uh, if you've ever played that game, this is very similar in nature to that. So check it out, and I uh, will see you guys next time. Bye.